there we go. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of The Commute. I will be your driver. I will be your passenger. Sitting out there waiting for you. Yeah. Sitting on a bench. I was that a bird shit on my head? <laughs> Sitting there just right by me. Wow. Some people call that good luck. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> I do not. That is not good luck. But uh, so I sat there and watched it dry. Bird shit dries. It took me quickly. a while to get there, apparently. <laughs> it's not, not it did dry <laughs> really fast. Really fast. Oh, man. So, uh, yesterday was April Fool's Day. Right on. And this woman decided she was going to play a, an April Fool's joke on her daughter. Her name is Angela Timmons. She works for Virginia College. Yeah. She sends her daughter a text that says, shots were fired at the school. And... Ha 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 ha. <laughs> so the lady's a riot. Wow, yeah. And uh... Oh, funny bone there. <laughs> so she uh... Her daughter's freaking out, trying to get a hold of her. Can't get a hold of her. <laughs> Do not run over the cop. <laughs> we almost ran over a cop. That's awesome. At least she had good humor about it. There we go. Oh, here we go. Fantastic. I like, I like how you took one look at me yesterday when I was coming to the car and you're like, oh, is this my April Fool's joke? <laughs> <laughs> Not you, I didn't see this, you. Who is this fucking Who is this fucking, fucking clown? I was going where we were picking up you know? clowns that day. That was the, uh... <laughs> no, we're just talking about, speaking of April Fool's, a uh, woman who works at Virginia College decided she was going to play a April Fool's joke on her daughter. So she sends her a text that says, shots were fired at the school. Oh. So the daughter's freaking out trying to get a hold of her. Classic. The uh, the uh, girl can't, so she calls the cops and says, look, you know, my mom just said shots were fired at Virginia College. I can get a hold of her. What's going on? Cops freak out, run down there. Oh, my gosh. Find out it was a joke. <laughs> she is now in jail. Oh. She's now spending... Yeah. Days, uh, they they didn't find the humor in that. They I didn't find it funny. They, I, don't, I don't understand. You know, it's it's <laughs> these cops, man. I'm telling you, that is a new breed of stupid. <laughs> I'm telling you. And what people thought was an April Fool's joke ended up not being. Uh, Pizza Hut is coming out with their own perfume. Ah. Oh. And it is Cheetos perfume. Excellent. I like the smell of Cheetos. Wait, Pizza Hut is doing Cheetos perfume. I guess perfume. they're owned by the same company. Oh, that's big, I guess. And it uh, <laughs> it's, it's it smells of the chemical cheese. Oh, <laughs> People are comparing it to ass. <laughs> they said that's it good. is a uh, chock full of ass. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but glowing reviews. But you can only get it if you live in Los Angeles or New York. And, uh, yeah, so I think we've got to take a trip. That is freaking classic. <laughs> Pick some up. I'm thinking at least if you're a chubby chaser. Yeah. You know, spray yourself like down with some of that. A couple hey, spritzes. But what's it taste like, you know? <laughs> exactly. <That's> amazing. <laughs> you can make all your food taste like Cheetos. Those perfumes just taste awful. You, know? you can get a salad, spray it with Cheetos perfume. Tastes like Cheetos. Right. <laughs> now you are into salads. I like Cheetos. Yeah, Cheetos, are, Cheetos are good. Cheetos are good. I don't want to be stinking like them all day, though. Yeah. yeah no, no. There's, there's a difference between taste and, and right. uh, smell. Exactly. Clearly. Exactly. I totally agree. So. Uh, Yes, looks right. like this is my stop. Dude, it's too quick stop. of a trip. Yeah, it a it normally trip. takes us too long to go from there There's to here. There's usually people wandering around You're a good streets. luck charm, I sent you guys uh, sailing down. Um, you know, I, I wanted to say, Ariana, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh-oh. Because the, uh, the huffing the boats I miss is... you. Yeah. I, I, was, uh, I wasn't see. kind to her, if, if we had their She their sent you hate mail, huh? No, I mean, you know, she's... Just in case. We'll, we'll be talking soon. All right, brother. Right the patch, there you go. All right. All right see, you guys, see you guys again soon. Yeah. Take care. Right. We'll be around. John Catamull, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, he's apparently well-known. Yeah. <laughs> you guys watch the video, says, that guy goes to my church. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah I was like, really? <laughs> so, he does not... Uh, this straight, he's a guy, he's a character. Yeah, sounds a good guy, man. He's a character. <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, so that's all the April Fool's shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. 
Nothing, uh, nothing else good or bad. It seemed like this year a lot more people hated April Fool's. It seemed like every year more and more people are just like, mm -hmm. not participating. Yeah, it gets pushed off to the margins. Like this. Dude, I like the delivery thing that the, uh, what was that, the the Roman thing or whatever it was where you like you give somebody something oh, yeah. to deliver <laughs> give them a letter and just keep on passing it down until until somebody gives up so like opens it open it and says haha you asshole but if that's their thing <laughs> if that's all they do how does anybody that's why it would be great here oh uh, yeah yeah we, we we should adopt it next year <clears throat> no Italian that was Italian that or was something. in Italy yeah yeah but we should adopt it that's a good thing yeah next year it's on the list oh man <sighs> Uh, Titanic making the news today. The ship or the movie? The ship. Okay. <laughs> They're making a sequel. <laughs> ship is Why still not? Yeah. Uh, it's still underwater. Uh huh. But uh, the one of the survivors, Rose Emily Ickerd, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, she was the longest living French survivor of the wreck, uh -huh. and she had made notes uh, during when it was going down and supposedly when they were in their rowboat trying to get Running saved. To <laughs> what are cold. <laughs> but uh, so this letter was found and it was kept in wherever and it was sold a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. The person that purchased it uh, decided to just put it out there you know, for everyone to see, everyone to read. So they translated it and uh, some pretty cool stuff. She was the maid of a wealthy American named Martha Stone. So she got to stay in first class mm -hmm. and help out. You know, that was her, her gig. Uh, she got in a rowboat. She was rescued by the Carpathia. And in her letter, it's just a little more insight as to what was happening on the ship. Uh, the owners of Macy's were on the ship. Mm-hmm and they decided to stay aboard. They helped their maid escape. And then Mrs. Strauss, who was the wife, put her arms around her husband. And she said, we've been married for 50 years. We've never left each other's side. I want to die with you. And just, that's like horrific to me. You know, just, mm. I mean, it's romantic, <laughs> I guess. In but, a tragic uh, way, a Shakespearean way. Yeah, but like the fact that people actually do that, you know, or did that. You know. And he shouldn't have, well, yeah, did that. <laughs> These days, they'd be pushing the bitch overboard. Yeah, let's not know? get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, honey. Looks like there's room on the boat now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do? Uh, another thing she saw, there was a, when the men were starting to get on the boat, uh, there was this old woman running around who got out and she was looking for a spot and the boats were pretty full. Mm -hmm. And this complete stranger just took off his safety harness put her on the boat huh. and he said uh, just make sure you pray for me and another thing I'm sure people did <laughs> you know yeah. they'd be like look lady you're old right you, what time you got you know you got the whole thing <laughs> forget about it um, billionaire Benjamin Guggenheim okay. was there and he helped all the women and children you know, get on their boats, and he got dressed and put a rose in his buttonhole and just sat there and waited to die. That was his thing. Was, they, they were, she, she was saying that all this was just matter of factly. Like, all these things where people were doing was like, here yeah. we go, time to die. Right. Not freaking out, not, not anything. Yeah. Uh, when she was on her boat, frantically rowing, she's like, saw something underneath her feet and there was a guy hiding underneath like I guess any you know, stuff or, or you know uh, yeah you know, like the board you sit on mm -hmm. is probably covered in blanket or whatever but she said she was just so exhausted she couldn't even say anything to him or mm -hmm. uncover him and she never found out who it was you know they got rescued and they pulled her aboard and mm -hmm. that was it so so there were cowards back then too yeah. You know? Nice, nice mix of... There were yeah. cowards. And then the weirdest thing to me was, uh, as they were rowing around, I guess looking for 
boats, they decided to go back to where the boat sank mm -hmm. to try to see if they could find other people. Right. And they didn't, and just everything was gone. But she said it was one of the most beautiful scenes she had ever seen in her life. She said the sun was just coming up, mm -hmm. there's these two giant icebergs, and the sun was turning them like bright pink. And they, she said they just all sat there and admired the view. Which again, is such a horrific yeah, what thing. The fact that you can still find beauty uh -huh. in something was was amazing. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Huh. So this day in history, yeah. April second, fifteen thirteen, Ponce de Leon discovers Florida. Wow, really? Yeah. Huh. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. 1513, wow. Yeah, you don't think of how early, like, other countries were here, too. Yeah, you know, like yeah. Born in the same landmass. But yet it seems weird points. that, I mean, to us, you find something that you can just, you can view a whole country in seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that they had, they found this massive land and they just had to discover it a chunk at a time. Right, sailing blindly, you know. And, uh, yeah, not yeah. knowing what's coming up. If you're gonna fall off the end of the earth, <laughs> you know. <laughs> April second, nineteen eighty-two, Argentina invades the Falklands. The beginning of the Falkland Island War. Wow. Which I find kind of interesting because usually major wars are out of our scope. You know, before we got into all these Gulf War conflicts back to back. They seem so trivial, but I mean, this was a major conflict yeah. in the Falkland Islands. I mean, you know, Marines landing on like those landing ships. They were like reusing the uh, World War II landing ships to wow. land on the islands, and you know, battleships and aircraft carriers going into the area and ship to ship fighting. And as recent as 1982. Right. You know. I know. 236 British, 750 Argentine casualties. Yeah. And mostly mostly naval casualties. The uh, the British sunk a uh, the Argentinian battleship, the uh, General something and General that was Bell Bel Rio Belgrado. Belgrado. And that was the majority of their casualties. So, and that was sunk with a British submarine. submarine. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Something else you don't ever, you know, you see stuff like that yeah. in the movies, but you practically no. when are submarines used to like torpedo sink a ship. ships other than playing a game. Right. Out and outside yeah. of like, you know, forty years earlier, you know. HMS Sheffield sunk by a missile. Yep. That's like, uh, that's almost old school, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. insane. And especially how, like, you know, well ships are crafted nowadays, too, that those, they still sunk due to, like, battle damage. I mean, there's, you know, ships that are under fire for hours. Oh, yeah. You know, they burn practically down to the, the decking, and it's, they're still... You know, they just fix them back up, but to actually have it sink, I mean, I just, I always thought that was an interesting conflict in modern warfare, you know, it's not, it... I don't know about you, I was too young at the time, I mean, we were the same age, but mm -hmm. to think anything of it at the time. Well, you know? yeah, I mean, news about it here was oh, yeah. pretty limited. It wasn't and a big thing. They kind of played it down, too, because our our diplomatic efforts in that thing were just tossed aside. There was no, there was no place for us in that. Really? Yeah. There was a place we weren't welcome in a wartime? Yeah. yeah especially not there. Oh, it, was a, it was a pretty big deal, like, of where the sovereignty lied, you know, exactly between the two. Mm -hmm. The, I guess the Argentinians dated back to, there was, there's some kind of a, a Spanish connection in there, like it was originally Spanish owned, but it had been owned by Britain since, you know, the early 1800s, I think, so. Wow. And the population there is largely British, but 
the art, how they played it out in, in Argentina was that the the people that lived there were oppressed by you know by the British and they wanted to be freed and well, everybody plays the, uh, the what was us story you know yeah they, it's, yeah, it's all propaganda to get people to fight against you know because how else are you gonna get people on a boat to fight you know the British Navy that's not really gonna happen all that often no oh, yeah. It's June 14th, Argentine garrison surrender. Short, short conflict overall, but you know, still. Yeah, two and a half months. But it was all, you know, there wasn't any, you know, launching missiles off of like boats at targets you didn't right. see. It how was, you war were there. is now. I mean, pe- boots were on the ground, you know, people were actually, you know, taking hills and, you know, That's fighting. Insane. They were like, Landing armor personnel carriers, like that stuff mattered. I mean, has something like that happened since? No, no I mean, I mean, outside you have of your Iraqi stuff, where you have encounters here and there, but like right. you said, for the most part, that's fought from afar. Fought from afar and fought against, you know, a modern army versus an obsolete army. In in the right, case of yeah. Iraq, I mean, any of those, their military was sorely outmatched by anything that you know any of the countries that went in sent there you know it was it was modern tanks versus you know soviet era tanks and earlier so yeah to, but to have two you know fairly equally matched forces you know equally matched being that it was so far away from britain that it was hard for them to reinforce oh, sure. you know anything I just, it's, that is neat. Yeah, it's an interesting con- modern conflict outside of... Right, and that's what makes it so interesting is how modern it was. Yeah, exactly. I mean, talk 31 years ago. Right. Kids these days would say, well, back then. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's so old. That never happened. Call of Duty. <laughs> I see that stuff all the time, man. Where's the hell, yeah? It's just... You know, sometimes you get ranked down and <laughs> where's hell? Uh, well, I guess more proof how there's no uh, no goodwill towards each other when you're a couple. There was a couple in Spain and there was a giant water wheel, right? And, uh, you know, used for a well when it was a big giant thing, mm-hmm. spin around. And they decided, wow, what a great place to have sex, you know, on top of this. Like, we're outside, and it's got the, the big wooden boards, and we can lean back on one. Mm-hmm. So they're doing their thing. And uh, one of the boards comes loose. She falls into the water. <laughs> she falls 30 feet into the water, oh, splashes down. She's stuck. She can't get out. The guy says, see ya. <laughs> He's like, what? I'm out of here. He takes off, man. The guy goes chucking. He just ran away. He just he just took off, man. He just said, I don't know if he thought she was dead or figured, well, she'll die. I, I don't know. They they don't know. Uh, they okay. think it was him that did call for help, though. He called uh, you know the emergency line there in Spain. <laughs> said uh, you know this girl just fell 30 feet into the water. So by the time they get there. Uh, the cops get there in an ambulance. She's suffering from hypothermia. Uh, yeah. I mean, and they get her out, and she was okay. Jesus. And they're interviewing a Chicago ER doctor about this for whatever reason. Okay. And he says that he alone sees two sex-related injuries per week. And that's one doctor. One doctor. In a big town, but still one doctor. Yeah. Sees two sex-related injuries per week. I'm thinking, Damn. how creative are people trying to get? Or, oh, no. you know, what, where are these people doing it? Or, I bet a lot of it is people doing it to themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, I'm going to try this. You know, I don't think as many people falling off buildings, you know, banging on window ledges or anything. Yeah, it's probably people like choking themselves out or, you know. That's probably a big one nowadays. Yeah, getting crap stuck in themselves or whatever. That is a big one. So, 
That's, I, yeah, that's, I'm sure that's what the majority of them is. A Barbie doll head shoved up your ass. Light bulbs or whatever else you can get we, up there. We don't recommend <laughs> you, uh... Well, if you can get a light bulb up your ass without a breaking, you've been at it for a while. <laughs> you know, that's... You're a champion. <laughs> you, you can pretty much get anything stuck up your ass. Uh, yeah, it's kinky Spaniard. <laughs> But to just run away. I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm out. I don't know if that situation called for like running away. And the thing is, he couldn't just run away. He had to climb down. <laughs> he had time to think about this. Yeah. He had to climb down and then run away. Mm -hmm. so. Climb down, get his pants. <laughs> Man, maybe. <laughs> but they didn't say like. I, I mean, I don't know. I guess he didn't do anything wrong. You know, they can't arrest him because they didn't yeah. say like they arrested him, but. Maybe he didn't have a phone. Maybe, it's not a crime to not help people. Oh, well, some places. I mean, there's that, uh, the Good Samaritan law. Yeah. Where, like, you can't, you know, if you just see somebody, like, dying on the pavement and you do nothing about it, they can charge you. Yeah, but it's, it's rarely enforced. I mean, depending who it is and how they're dying. Yeah. Yeah, there's some bomb on the side of the road. But the fact that we have to make a law like that. But yeah, well, exactly. Because people exactly. just can't take the time to, you know, help somebody. We'll just look at you. Right. Well, people are afraid, too. I, I bet anymore they probably think it's a scam. Because everybody's so shady. Yeah. Again, pending where you are. Mm -hmm. I think if it was like an hour town, you don't think twice about it. Right. If you're in Philly. Right. I'll call somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go up to you and try to help, I don't think. I'll stand by and call and wait for people to show. And, if it gets worse and help is needed, I would help. Well, too, I mean, it's, you know, depending on what is involved in, no, in helping sure, the person, sure. too. I mean, if they're bleeding all over the place, do you, you take the towel. risk for yourself or, you know? Well, then you can get sued sometimes for helping. Right. If you yeah. help and fuck, a, you know, fuck up the situation even worse. Yeah, there was a story a couple weeks ago where, like, the guy, like, his car or whatever got washed away, like, in a, in a flood. And, like, he sued, like, the people that responded to, like the scene and like got him out of his car he, like sued them See, uh, and that's why people don't help you know yeah it, well i mean it was those people's job to help though you know they were the oh that's right they were the i did see something on that it was like the firefighter <laughs> right he's suing the, <laughs> suing the firefighters for helping him jesus christ yeah, okay uh good news for the christians just Christians as a whole. Yeah. Okay. Two historians claim that they have found the Holy Grail. Oh, yeah. The Holy Grail is now in the hands. Uh, there's a church in northern Spain. And, uh... Well, let me go back. Well, it's currently in a church in northern Spain. Okay. It was actually there for a while. Uh, these historians found two medieval Egyptian parchments. And in it, they had mentioned the Chalice of Christ, saying it was taken from Jerusalem to Cairo. Uh, it says that uh, it was then... Let me see here. Okay, it was then given to someone from, uh, from a Muslim to Spain. It was a reward for helping the Egyptians in a famine. Okay. Okay, so he had this chalice. So, well, it makes sense. I mean, the Moors conquered a right. large swath of Spain. I so mean. they're saying, so they, they find this and they go, okay, let's try to find anywhere in history where a chalice has been in this area, this area. We'll follow it down the road, see, see where it's going. Uh, so then, uh, so it was then given to someone, blah, 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 blah. He gave it to King Ferdinand as a gift. That's who received it. So from there, he puts it in this church. It's been sitting in this church all this time. Okay. So these guys find it, go down and say, they take a look at it. They do some uh, carbon dating on it and everything matches up. And they say that that is the Holy Grail. Hmm. This has been the Basilica for a thousand years now. And uh, here's though, a little shady here on my part. These historians just released a book 
called Kings of the Grail. So are they coming up with this whole thing to sell their book? Yeah. You know, and but people are running down there and taking a look. It's in a case and they're checking it out. Yeah, everybody wants and the, they're buying the story. You want that Da Vinci Code crap, you know? Oh, I mean, yeah. How many how many tickets bought you know were purchased from people like flying over to to Rome to like look around the <laughs> uh, you know, the holy city and stuff. To Everybody wants to be Indiana Jones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're gonna have those freaks like, like going in there trying to drink out of it. <laughs> Smashing the glass. But it goes against Indiana Jones because it is gold with all these jewels on it. Yeah, yeah. Indy, so you'll turn the bones if you drink out of it. <laughs> Indy would have said no. Sorry. You have chosen poorly. So the game forced coming on Steam. Yeah, yeah, it's I, I saw it on sale on there today. It's it was like fifty percent off. So I started like you know going down through the thing, and it's it's kind of like a I don't know over the head perspective, like a Diablo kind of hack and slash puzzle solving sort of game. It looks pretty cool. It's like co-op. You can play four players. But the interesting thing was like the story that was like associated with it. And like the developers, I guess it was like eight people to start. These like college students, and they took over like a, an, an unused room in this college, and they they just moved in. They started living there and working on the game out of this room in the college, and like nobody called them on it at all. They just they worked in there for months and months. This was in Denmark. <laughs> It, you know, they got to a certain point. They were, you know, they were taking their meals out of like the staff kitchen and stuff at night. And you know, they moved Jesus. in. They moved in fridges and microwaves and stuff, and they just worked and all slept at the same time and just kept working on this game the whole time. Wow! And eventually, they got caught. They got kicked out, and they did a they did a Kickstarter to keep working on the game. And they found a place to like stay, keep working on it. It eventually got more people working on it, so all these people were living together, like living as like this communal family, like working on this game. Why did and, they just uh, do a Kickstarter to begin with? I don't, I don't know. I, I guess it was just, you know, it was eight of them. It was just a student project. So they didn't get arrested. Right? They, they just got kicked out. Yeah, they they just just got, got out of here, rascals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wise acres. Wow. Uh, yeah, they got kicked out, and then they uh, t- they couldn't get it. Um, they couldn't get it produced anywhere, so they ended up and they got together and they got a twenty thousand dollar or two hundred thousand dollar loan to get it produced and shipped and everything else. So now it's on Steam for like seven bucks or something, seven fifty. Seem like a good game at least. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. I mean, worth taking over a college for. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> that's, if it makes that money and it's got a good story behind it, that's yeah, that's enough for me that's cool yeah it looks, looks more finished than some of the games i've you know picked up on there recently oh yeah yeah they keep doing these early access games on steam i don't want that yeah where it's you're just you're playing the demo and the, the you know the the actual game isn't coming out for like another year basically because nah. they keep they'll keep updating it and patching it but I, mean, I get the need for it but yeah i don't want to pay for it no yeah. yeah, it's just it's not worth it until if you want to give me the beta right and ask for my help Cool. Sure. You know, I'll I'll be to test it for you. Cool, for sure. I'll play the demo or whatever, you know, but don't charge me for, you know, full price for a game. For helping you out. So to me right. it's like Oculus Rift. Mm-hmm. Charge me a couple hundred dollars so I can build it for you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I can come up with the software and everything for you. And if I'm that good, for, I'm gonna make my own thing. You'll sell it for two billion dollars right after money. <laughs> <laughs> and so. So what's this other game? Kerbal Space Program? Yeah, the uh, space program. It's been on there for a while, but it's it's on sale right now. It's too, on Steam, Steam as well. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not quite as good of a deal. It's it's like sixteen bucks, but the the game looks really friggin' cool. Like you start out with nothing, and you've got to research all these you know components. You're basically like running your own space program, and you got to test all these rocket parts and you know different types of spaceships and stuff. And you run like space missions and. You know, you can develop like a space station and put it up there. It's really like hmm, finely detailed for like something that looks so simple, you know, on the outside. But it's it's really cool. I mean, 
all the videos and stuff I've seen for Sounds it. Pretty. Something I want to play, but... Not for $16? Not for $16. I mean, no. it's... Any more... For me to buy something off of Steam, it's got to be five and under. So even that forced game, yeah, it's a little... Especially because there's so many options. Right. You know, that yeah. are that price. And there's so many games that are kind of just rehashes of the same sort of thing. It's got to be a big departure for me to pick up a game anymore. I mean, I don't know. Like I was talking about that MMO that's coming out, you know, the uh, <coughs> Wildstar. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's cool. It's got great graphics, like the cartoony Warcraft type graphics. It runs really nice, really smooth. The combat's fun. You know, but it's like, you know, from what I played, I mean, I played in the beta last weekend, and, but to me, it, you know, it's just kind of more of the same, you know, it's not anything new that I haven't played, not all in the same game, right. but that I haven't played in other games it just looks different. before, like, it's it's not, there's no new mechanics they're throwing at you, you know, that's, it's, it's cool, I mean, I would play it if I had time, but, yeah, who's got time? Exactly. Speaking of the space program, yeah, uh, not so much anymore. Any more astronauts, they go up into space and they can use the bathroom. You know, they have bathrooms for them to mm -hmm. use. Well, back in the day, they needed diapers. Right? Right. The astronauts wore diapers. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what had happened was Alan Shepard, he used to have to spend hours, like seven hours, in a space capsule to prepare just for a 15-minute orbital you know loop around mm -hmm. and once he was in there they wouldn't let him out right and he one time he says look i have to go to the bathroom so bad and i want to piss my pants mm -hmm. here and they said we're sorry you we're not letting you out so he just goes in his suit yeah. he says all right well, I'm, I'm gonna go in my suit so mission control had to turn off his uh, biomedical sensors until the oxygen in his suit dried up the urine mm -hmm. and then they could turn everything back on and they said okay well we can't have that. That's that's a pain. Yeah. So that's how they came up with the astronaut diapers. That was actually in uh, the right stuff. I don't know if you remember. Have you ever seen that mm -hmm. movie? No. Oh man, that's a fantastic movie. What was it? That Alan Shepard? Yeah, Alan Shepard's in, in it. Suit. You know, yeah, being in a suit and all the sensors are going off as he's sitting there. <clears throat> and, nice. uh, but yeah, there's there's a bunch of great. That's just an awesome movie all around. Well, anytime anyone's peeing in a suit is great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, good acting too. I mean, it's. You know, started at the beginning of the space program and went all the way through, you know, that orbiting and going to the moon. And yeah, that's one I've never seen. Oh, man, it's just a great movie. Made me want to be a test pilot when I was a kid. <laughs> you kind of are. Look at me now. You know? Yeah. You're piloting right now. Yep, piloting something <laughs> on the ground. Well, the thing with the diapers was, for the men, they wanted to make them as comfortable as possible. Mm -hmm. So, where your penis goes, they made a sleeve attached to a condom with a hole at the tip that, so that they could pee inside of a pouch with a one-way valve okay. in the suits. The thing is, they had, they had different sizes of the sleeve, small, medium, and large. And you couldn't lie about it, because if you did, if you went up a size, just the, <laughs> your pee would come back into the suit, and it would right. be everywhere, and, and it would be a hot mess. Well, the astronauts didn't like that. They were kind of embarrassed, you know, to get their size, and, you know, I guess most of them weren't well endowed. So NASA decided to change the size of the sleeves to uh, from small, medium, and large to large, gigantic, and humongous. <laughs> <laughs> So in worst case scenario, you're large. Right. <laughs> so then when they would ask them, they could go large, and they felt better about that, and they, they okayed it. They said, fantastic. <laughs> that fixed the whole problem. Yeah, because at that time, I mean, it was, it was a largely collaborative effort. I mean, like, those guys that went up had hands-on with oh, you know, yeah. the scientists working on oh, yeah. the capsules and everything else. I mean, it was... It was a group effort on everything sure. to do with those things. And in regular airplane flight, a company called Spike Aerospace is coming out with a plane called the S-512. Uh, it will hold 18 people, 
and it will go from London to New York in less than four hours. Okay. It will travel 1,370 miles per hour. The thing causing a big stink with this plane is they said they're not going to put any windows in the plane at all. It's a windowless plane. And alongside you where your window would be, you can it, it'll be a screen that you can either put on what would be what you'd be looking at outside. Okay. You know, they have cameras. Sure. I want to look outside. Or your entertainment will be on there, or you can throw up if you have stuff for work to do. Mm -hmm. You know, throw up your files and work that way. And they're saying there's no need for windows in a plane. No. Because usually when you're there, you can't see anything anyway. Uh, it adds weight to the plane and it gives you ceiling issues. You know, ceiling off the plane, you know, mm -hmm. for you know, waterproof oxygen, things like that. And they said that within 20 years, they believe all airplanes will be windowless. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, it, it, to me, that makes sense. Boeing doesn't agree with it. No? Yeah. They do not. Boeing said for the the biggest reason why you need windows is for safety. They said, and not so much so that you can get out, but if there's a problem, those trying to help have to be able to look in. So they're saying, and they're saying that they they will not. They said they have no plans. Come up with you know to be able to look the designs. In. I guess to see what the problem see? is. How much can you see inside those little porthole windows that they have on the side? I have no idea. You see if people are dying. See if they're dead. See. I wonder if it's, if it's not so much even them, but security, say like in a hostage situation. You know, the planes fly along next to you, and they want to. Because this prototype they had, the plane, it, the pilots didn't even have a window. Like, no, I don't like that. It was just, I don't like that either. That's what I don't like, is the pilots not having... But they said with everything, you know, all the radar and everything you have, you can land a plane blind. But... See, I don't know. I was uh, And I was talking about this on the way home yesterday from New York, is some of the billboard signs are all... LCDs display, oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. that's it. There's nothing else. It's like the road sign of where you're going to go is an LCD display. The speed limit sign is an LCD wow, display. Wow, even the speed limit sign. Yes. Yeah. What well, now? Okay. Why are we fully relying on electricity getting to these right. signs to run this? What and that's the thing. They can still look outside because they'll have. They can make it the screen show them what they would be looking at. Right. But if that goes down... Yeah, if you lose power, you're... you're and they're saying you can still land the plane safely. Uh, and again, Boeing disagrees with that. But this plane is going to be available uh, in 2018. Hmm. I'm guessing it's going to be an arm and a leg. If it only carries 18 people. Yeah. You know, that's going to be... But, I mean, four hours, you know, that's... I don't know what the average flight is. Is it six to eight or something to get from the East Coast? Yeah, the East Coast about right. I, I can't remember. It's been so it's cutting the time in half. It's been like yeah. 10 you years. figured you generally go well. Maybe it's gonna be longer because well, they're saying less than four hours. The plane normally goes what four hundred miles an hour. Yeah, depending on wind speed. And right. Stuff. Like, you know, you can and they're say saying it's gonna go. 1,000 1370 Which is... But even still, the Concord, how much did the freaking Concord cost to fly on? That wasn't oh, cheap. Yeah, no. I'm talking 10 was, grand, you know? Yeah, that was crazy expensive. Hmm. I don't know. That sounds like kind of a niche thing. Like, who's going to really do that? I have business as well. Yeah. I'm going to run to New York from London real fast. I'll be back for four hours. You know? I don't even know why you got to do that anymore with the technology. It's, you don't need to be face to face. You don't need to go to a meeting. No, no, not at all. I mean, so. yeah, I don't know. I, that that seems too <laughs> too slow, really. You know? Yeah, I mean, if, if you're gonna make it, because well, I mean, the the Concorde was like two hours, right? You know, London to New York, two hours. Well, maybe it'll be cheaper than that then. Yeah, and that's what they're thinking. Because the Concorde, just that was the problem. It was too damn expensive. But it's got to be it's got to be expensive enough because 18 seats. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's not a lot of people. You gotta. 
if you're going to be paying that thing off, I, uh, that seems a little too... I mean, let's say it was today's value of the dollar. If you charge 4000 call it 5000 Yeah. And you have 18 people. That's $90,000 for one flight. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine that's got to be enough profit for them, don't you think? I don't know. No, one way? I don't know how much gas is going to cost. Oh, well, like yeah. That. That's the other thing. Fuel has got to be absurd. It's probably... You know, flying that fast, you're burning you're a lot burning of fuel. Up, yeah. So, especially at whatever height they're flying. I mean, the higher you go, the less you're going to use. Right. But it's a pretty badass plane, though. Check it out. I mean, I'll post the article on uh, yeah, our yeah, Facebook link it page. Up. Yeah, it'd be cool. But for now, let us call the phone booth in the desert. Oh no! Yes. Again. Oh yes. What's the number you have dialed has been changed to a conference. You are the only party in uh, this conference. We're the only people in the end. Hello, boy. Bye, 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 bye. If you want to call the phone booth, get a hold of us between 4 and 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Number 760-733-9969. I got about another 28 days left of me. <laughs> Yeah, because you had two, you had two nibbles. I had, man. Successive they're they're biting. Nibbles. They're yeah. biting. So. But we took a step. We went from a hello to a just, nothing. Yeah. To now we're the only ones. Keeping, uh, keeping Joe's hope alive. Oh man. <laughs> so one of the uh, new trending things on Instagram is uh, there were two things. One a little newer than the other. The first thing they were doing was hashtag cock in a sock. And people, men would take pictures of themselves completely naked, except for having their cock in a sock. And the whole reason behind this was they were trying to raise money for cancer, for cancer research. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know how it raises money, posting your picture. You know, they always have these things like on Facebook and change your picture of this for this. No, it's probably like, you know, they make some kind of deal, a certain number of hits. And or that's enough attention. Yeah, I guess then you're going to get advertising. Yeah, or they reach a certain level and people start donating. More. If anything, it brings awareness to right. it. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> the new thing is hashtag be holing which is... Hashtag what? Beholing. Beholing, okay. Which uh, is short for buttholing. Mm -hmm. And people are taking pictures of their buttholes for colon health awareness. <laughs> and it's pictures of, I mean, men, women, bent over, cheeks spread, there's my hole. <laughs> and uh, let's fight colon health, shall we? Instagram, of course, isn't happy about it, and they're taking the pictures down as fast as they're going on. They probably have a hashtag beholding yeah. sensor, you know, going up. Why? What difference? Who's that hurting? Exactly. You know? If it's trying to do a good thing, but I, I don't know. I guess their whole thing is new because I think they, they didn't care so much with cock in a sock because there was no nudity. This is not nudity. It's graphic nudity. You know, it's, you're looking at people's buttholes. You know, it's not just an ass or an ass cheek. Yeah. It's a butthole. And I guess their thing is, hey, we say no nudity. Find a more clever way to raise, you know, awareness for yeah. your cause. But if that's our thing, that's our thing. <laughs> you know. Because then, you know, if they let that go, next week's going to be Breast Awareness Week. And, yeah. You know, it's just going to be titties everywhere. <laughs> not that I'd be complaining about it. I'm just saying. Right. You know. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll do it. Yeah. Do hashtag be holes if you see me tonight. Be holing. Be holing. Yeah, sorry about that one. I think they just, I thought they could just take down like the hashtag thing. They could just block it somehow. Yeah, because you have to create a hashtag. It's kind of like creating a, a page. Yeah, so can't they, they just... can shut your page down. Yeah, I mean, they, I, I would think they could just shut down that whole page and then nobody could... But I guess it doesn't stop you still from doing it. Mm -hmm. It may not go to the page, right. but you can hashtag anything and yeah. take a picture and post a picture. So it just doesn't link to it. Yeah. yeah I'm sure if they're that upset about it, they probably did take it down, but they don't mm -hmm. notify people. They're still like, beholding. Yeah. Ching. 
I mean, they're spreading them hard too. You guys, if you can find any of these pictures, it's great. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like they're all in all different places. Mm -hmm. I mean, it goes from, you know, obviously people in their bedrooms or bathrooms, people on the beach, you know, doing their bee hole. <laughs> you know, people outside chilling, people in their cars. <laughs> people are bee holing everywhere. Wow. That's the new thing, huh? It's the new thing. It's, it's the, the nose craze, the, the hottest trend right now on Instagram. Oh, man. Zebra stripes. Uh, they think they figured out why zebras have stripes. You know, they used to say they thought it was to confuse lions, uh, camouflage, decoration, which all made sense. You know, okay, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, but they found out it is to deter biting flies. Okay. They studied animals with stripe patterns, and they found out that most of them lived in areas that have biting flies, and such as you know the plains of Africa. You know we're going to find a lot of zebras, but you're also going to find a lot of lions. Yeah. <laughs> you know so, but uh, to reinforce their study, they did a study on biting flies, and they don't know why this is, but they do not like to land on striped surfaces. Not just rigid surfaces, just if it's flat and striped, they do not like to land on it. Huh. Which is a pretty easy study. You just put a bunch of different yeah, you know, patterns. patterns down. And <clears throat> so they think that that's how uh, that came to be. And they're, they're going with that now. Huh. That's interesting. But if, so I figure... But I don't, I don't know what that get into. Uh, I guess survival of the fittest, you know, the striped Yeah, but animals. how? I mean, what, what... But it's not like other animals have stripes. In that case, all the animals in that yeah. area... Well, and what would be killing them off? You know, what would be killing off the regular non-striped zebras? Or, you Biting know... flies? Malaria? I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, if they're not passing down whatever oh, disease yeah, yeah. it is yeah. now, then what, you know, I, I don't know. Like I had said, the yeah. other animals, I mean, they only like to bite zebras, so the zebras got these stripes. Right. There's so many animals in Africa, I mean, look how many different kinds of animals there are. Yeah. And not many of them are striped. But I'm going to try it out, I'm going to start wearing striped clothes more often. Yeah, Let's see if so flies bite you. Yeah, yeah. no flies on me. <laughs> Everyone else be getting bit, smacking themselves and shit. And apparently that, that thing with the uh, striped pattern like if you wear vertical stripes you look taller or whatever and horizontal stripes mm -hmm. you're wide it's supposedly it's just the opposite really as what you're always told huh <laughs> because that explains of the way, why i don't look so svelte <laughs> because of the way that, like the human eye recognizes patterns that's huh you get completely the opposite effect uh men and women Men's IQs are easier to spot just by looking at someone. Just look at someone, if you were to guess their IQ, mm -hmm. it would be easier for you to figure out a man's IQ than a woman's IQ. They took 80 male and female students and they made them take IQ tests. Mm -hmm. Then they took 160 students, 160 different students, and had them try to guess what all of their IQs were. And they were right more often than not with the men than the women. Hmm. And they think the reason for that is, they don't know for sure, the, the study's still going on. Uh, they're wondering, is intelligence more visible on men? You know, is there some kind of gene that, that affects how men look? They said another deterrent for guessing a woman's IQ is women were usually judged by their looks. So the prettier they were, the higher the IQ they had. And that kind of, you know, messed up the, the study. Right. Uh, they said a lot of people also have a mental image of what an intelligent face looks like. Mm -hmm. They say it's narrow, long nose, thin chin. And they yeah. say that's completely wrong. Mm -hmm. They said that, that how you look, as far as they can tell, has nothing to do with your IQ. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so they're so going on with that. I kind of figured that because women are so fucking crazy and confusing anyway. That's throwing they, off their just look at Yeah, just like, <laughs> you, you look at a woman and it's like, now you're being asked a question about them and you know no matter what you say is gonna be wrong and now it's a fucking <laughs> trick. You're fucking tricking me into guessing what their, uh, 
what their IQ is, and, and she looks smart, but eh. I dated a girl like that before, and she was crazy as shit. <laughs> so that had I some uh, bearing smart. on I mean, just so much, yeah, because... Well, hopefully there was double-sided glass, so they, you know, they wouldn't see the people. See who's... Yeah, I don't even like know right if it was photos. That way or... that pressure wasn't on you. <laughs> you look dumb. Sorry, it's for a study. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> Oh. And uh, in Vancouver, mm -hmm. a place called the Mega Ill Cafe is serving pot infused pizza. Uh, it is a BYOC place, bring your own cannabis. Okay. You can bring it there. Um, they provide you vaporizers to smoke out of. If you have a medical marijuana card, you can then buy the pizza, they'll sell it to you. And it's drizzled with the uh, oil from the marijuana. Mm -hmm. They drizzle the dough with it before they cook it. And uh, there you go. They said that uh, a cancer survivor who used marijuana through her whole recovery, you know, swears marijuana was what helped her and got her through a lot. Yeah. So she came up with this whole place. Uh, they say it's all organic local ingredients that they use. They try to make it as healthy as possible. Mm -hmm. However, there's new regulations going into effect this week that are probably gonna make them stop being able to cook with it. Oh yeah. I guess because it's probably not legal there anyway. Or is it? If you have BYOC and they're providing you with well I never heard of it being legal in Canada. But then you have to have the the medical marijuana license. Yes, I guess you can smoke it there, but you're still smoking in public, which even if you have a license, you're not supposed to smoke it in, pu in public. Or probably handle it, too. I mean, that's the other thing. You're right. You're taking whatever... That, I mean, that's the thing with the medical marijuana. It's it's a specific dosage given out to, you know, people that need that. If you're going to a place like that, I mean, it's... You're kind of... I don't know. Spreading the wealth. Yeah, but then, you know, having people go in and change around and handle it and mess with it and everything else it's like an outside thing. yeah and especially because you don't know how you're going to react to it and yeah. you can absorb that oil and yeah exactly so. all right well that will do it for today's episode of the commute make sure mm -hmm. to check out our facebook page the commute check us out on youtube the commute podcast like and subscribe you can send us an email at the commute podcast at comcast.net and you can follow us on twitter at driver passenger hope to see you soon yep